Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. Well, this bare face can tell you only one thing. Today we're trying out a new foundation. That's right, from Laura Mercier, I have the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. Seriously, all the words. Every brand now has to use all the words just for a foundation. Anyway, I have the shade 1C2 Chiffon. It's $48, one ounce. It comes in, I think, 30 shades. And when I looked at the shade range, I actually wasn't super impressed with the deeper shades. Hopefully they'll do better. I don't know. Maybe they consider this to be like a flexible color, but I didn't notice that on there. However, I can say that I, you know, the shade I am, this 1C2, yeah, chiffon. It is the fourth lightest shade in the range, which I was kind of blown away by because even though I know my skin is light, I'm usually like not that light in the spectrum. So maybe the darker shades in the range were, are more complimentary than I think they are, whatever. But I have been playing around with this, so let's put it on and I'll give you some thoughts. And if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm into all things hair, skin, and makeup. And if you are too, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button because you know you're gonna come back for more. All right, before I start putting it all over my face, I wanna tell you what the Laura Mercier site actually tells us about this. I think that's something really important that people don't pay too much attention to is the actual purpose behind a foundation. We all know it is supposed to even out our canvas and to some degree it is supposed to, you know, be good for some skin types and not always all skin types, even though so many of them say they're good for all skin types. I can tell you from a lot of experience, they're not. So let me put my spectacles on and I'll tell you what Laura Mercier says. So it's a long wearing, medium, buildable coverage, weightless foundation, suitable for all skin types, including sensitive skin. It's vegan, fragrance free, non-comedogenic, dermatologist tested. It's supposed to blur the look of imperfections, pores and fine lines, improve skin tone and texture, long wearing for 12 hours, control oil immediately, helps improve skin texture in six weeks, helps improve hydration over 24 hours, humidity, sweat and waterproof. It goes on and on and on with all these benefits. Here is what I'm gonna tell you right off the bat. From my initial experience testing this out, if you have oily skin, I think you will like this very much. If you have dry skin, you're gonna have to do like I did and do a little extra prep. Make sure your skin is very hydrated, moisturized, and staying juicy. If it's a, like been a little while, like you did your skincare and it's been a couple hours, I would go in with another layer of some sort of like a moisturizing primer, either something like this very expensive um, Miracle Cream, not Miracle Cream, Magic Cream from Charlotte Tilbury, or any other sort of like hydrating primer that you like to use because I do find this really wants to go on a nice hydrated surface. Now I never wear foundations for 12 hours, it just doesn't work out that way for me. Although I did have this on for a little over nine hours the other day, it wore very nicely. I will say it did start breaking up like around my pores, but I did not touch up with powder at all throughout the entire day. And let's face it, if you wanna get 12 hours out of your makeup, you're gonna have to touch up. So as you can see, this is a serum-like consistency, which a lot of the foundations have been coming out lately, have that sort of texture, which I love. Because it does have medium coverage, it still allows some of my imperfections to come through, so it looks natural on my skin. However, it feels so lightweight, it is buildable, so I really do like that about it. Let's start putting this on while I'm shedding you up. We better clip back. So for starters, I do not recommend you going in and dotting all over the entire face and then blending. It does dry down quickly and you will not be able to move it once you get to the other side of your face. So one side of your face at a time. I did find I like using a brush to apply. I feel like a beauty blender with the serum type foundations really soaks up too much of the product and you end up using more than you really need to. All right, so I've done just one side of my face. You can tell it is definitely medium. I do like to build up a little more in this area here where I have more hyperpigmentation and a little bit of redness, but overall, I really like the coverage. But I will say, they say this is a natural foundation, and I think the term natural has kind of like been used as like a catch-all. Usually natural has like a little bit of a sheen to it. Like, I don't, it's not shiny or glossy or anything like that, but it just, you're, it looks like your skin. This, I feel, looks a little more matte than natural. And actually, as it dries down, it looks really matte. All right, let's do the other side. Now, as you can tell, I used that whole single pump 
Well, actually that was two pumps now I think about it. That's what one single pump looks like. There's no way I could get away with one pump for my whole face of this. I don't care, it's not a big deal, but just so you know. It does spread so smoothly. It doesn't feel like it's catching anywhere and it doesn't feel like it's drying down immediately, but it does dry down quickly. Now, I hope you can tell that this side here looks a little more dried down, a little more matte, and I just applied this side and it does have a little more of a sheen to it, but I will tell you, it will continue to dry down and look completely matte, which at first freaked me out. I really don't like matte foundations. Like at this age, matte doesn't really do much to kind of like hide. It actually kind of like, it overemphasizes. It just shows me, at least on my skin, where there are like, you know, things I don't wanna see. But this foundation I found to be weird in that respect. So the first hour I was like, mm, I don't know. And literally two hours in, it was like it had finally warmed up on my skin and actually became one with my skin. I loved how it looked. Now it feels completely weightless. I don't notice it at all, which is huge. Although I feel like a lot of foundations are like that now. That's just where the technology is caught up. They knew that, know that that's what we as consumers really like. None of us are out there going, oh, could you please give me one of those thick, heavy ones that I can feel on my face all day? That's not happening. But because this is so lightweight, I of course gave it the time to try and see what would happen on my face. This is what I want for my makeup. And I loved it all day long. Now, like I said, I didn't touch up at all during the day. I just let it be so I could see what it would do. If you're gonna wear makeup for 12 hours, yeah, you should probably powder here and there where you're getting a little shine. That's just how that goes. But overall, by the end of the day, it lasted so well. The fact that this is supposed to be humidity, sweat, and waterproof, I was like, are you kidding me? But it's true. When I go to wash off any residue that's on the back of my hand, it doesn't just come off with like a little soap and water. I actually had to use a little bit of my cleansing balm just to like break it up a little bit. And I gotta say, I think the color match is really good for me. Lately, I've been having a difficult time finding just really good shade matches and that's a me problem because of all the different, you know, pigmentations in my skin. But this one here I think is pretty good. All right, I am going to finish up my makeup, kind of put a full face, not a super full face, but like an everyday full face of makeup on. And I will come back to you so we can discuss. All right, you guys, I am back. So to finish off my face, well, I'm not gonna talk about the actual color products on my face. I actually made a video within this video that'll be the next video coming up. I have five new products on my face. And if you wanna see what they are, Stay tuned for the next video, which should do show up on Wednesday. Anyway, so I actually finished off my complexion. I used the Pat McGrath under my eyes. I used the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Cake, kind of in this area here for setting. I used the Patrick Ta for face. This is the She's Statuesque. It's like the bl uh, bronze and contour palette. So I used it for contour and for bronzing. I went over the top with my makeup by Mario. And I used the NARS, I just love this. This is the Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder in the shade Cliff. I use that just like for under this area here, like under my cheeks and for in the middle of my forehead. I just, I like that as like a nice way to finish it all off. And then after I'd done my makeup, well, after I'd done my cheeks, I went over the top with the Hourglass Ambient Setting Powder. This is in the shade Mood Light. You should know that by now because I use it all the time. There's no highlighter on my cheeks. It's just this special blush that you need to come back to the next video to find out about. All right, so overall, this is where we are with the complexion. What do you think? It's definitely more matte than what I am used to, but like I said, in two hours, it, it like transforms. It becomes more one with my skin. It must warm up on my skin and just looks like my skin, but so much better. I mean, you can still see my hyperpigmentation, some of my discoloration through here, and I'm fine with that because I don't like it to be such like a strong difference between my neck and my face. It just is what it is. But I love how I can't feel it on my face. I think the color match is good. The longevity is great. I did use a little more powder than I did in the last time I tried it, and I did set it with the Calare Surf Proof Setting Spray. So we'll see if that helps with any more longevity. Here again, I don't think I'm gonna be in this more than nine hours today. I'm not a 12 hour makeup girl, I'm just not. But I hope that you see it the way I see it. It just, it's like natural, 
but it's not. It just, I think it's a really, really great foundation. I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of overlooked just because the reviews on it are all over the place. So here again, if you have dry skin or combo normal dry skin, you absolutely need to hydrate it and moisturize it before you use this. If you have oily skin, I don't think you need to. You may want to use a slight oil blocking primer just in your t-zone but i think your natural oils will just kind of mix with this and be really really nice but you know your skin i feel like laura mercier is one of those brands especially in their complexion range that gets a little overlooked i hear like here and there like oh my god i love this oh my god i love that but i never hear it like broadly throughout the whole beauty community that everyone's obsessing over a Laura Mercier foundation. But I hope that changes for this one because I think it is really a special foundation. It's actually not like any of the others I have. I would say it's closest to the House Labs, but the House Labs has a little more of like a glow to it. They're, they're different, but it's as close as it's going to get to this one here. All right, you guys, so like I said, if you want to see the rest of the products on my face, tune into the next video because I found some new gems that I did not expect to like as much as I do. All right, you guys, that is all for today's video. As always, I want to thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you real soon. Mwah.